Hi everyone, welcome back. This uh, presentation is about conjugation in paramecium. It is a mode of refraction uh, where there is a, a nuclear reorganization exchange of the nuclear uh, chromosomal material, genetic material, etc. Okay, so we will see in detail the process of conjugation that is taken up by paramecium. Uh, paramecium, we undergo a sexual phenomenon, it is what is referred as the sorry, okay, conjugation. Okay, and uh, it is often referred as a sexual mode of reproduction, but here it is just a temporary union of two individuals of the same species, of one and the same species, and it is for the purpose of exchanging of a part of their genetic material. To be specific, it is the uh, micronuclear material that is being exchanged. Even though paramecium possesses uh, two uh, like nuclei, a macronucleus and a micronucleus, the conjugation process, it is uh, the nucleus which uh, is involved in the conjugation process, it is the micronucleus. Okay, so the micronuclear material is being uh, exchanged between the conjugates, okay, the, the individuals which uh, undergoes conjugation. Uh, and uh, it was T.H. Sonborn in uh, 1937 uh, who discovered that every paramecium would not conjugate with any other paramecium of the same species. That is, uh, there is a specific, uh, what you call, this, maybe a selection process or a behavior pattern which is shown to select the uh, partner during the conjugation process. So, on the basis of their mating behavior, Sonborn found that each species of paramecium exists in a number of varieties or what he referred as syngens and within each syngen there are a number of mating types okay and these mating types are morphologically identical but show physiological differences so in the case of paramecium caudatum there are 16 syngens and each of the syngen do have two mating types and so the conjugation takes place between the two different mating types of the same syngen. I hope that is clear. Okay, so in the case of paramecium caudatum, which is a species, very common species under paramecium, there are two mating types and conjugation takes place between these two mating types. It can never happen between two individuals belonging to the same mating type. Is it okay? So that is about the uh, uh, like very brief account on the mating types involved in conjugation. Now, when we look into the process of uh, conjugation, uh, here uh, it is listed the various stages through which uh, individuals stay, uh, go through the process of conjugation. Okay, so we will look into in detail. In conjugation, two individuals uh, from two different mating types of a single syngen, they come in contact for a temporary basis during the only during the process of conjugation. So the two individuals which are going to be in uh, like in the conjugation process, they are known as preconjugants. They are known as preconjugants. That is before conjugation process starts, the individuals belonging to two different mating types, they come together, they contact ventrally, that is by way of ventral surface and uh, they join by their oral groups. I hope that is clear. You can see here in the picture that is the oral group of one mating type and the oral group of the other mating type and these two individuals, these are, these belong to two different mating types. These two individuals belong to the two different mating types. They come together and uh, join by their oral groups. Okay, so these two individuals are now referred as pre-conjugants. Clear? Now, uh, once this, uh, what you call the two individuals, uh, the starting to undergo conjugation process, they stop feeding and their buccal structures disappear. Okay, even though the picture here is not clear, but you can see that they stop feeding and their buccal structures completely disappear. The pellicle and the ectoplasm at the point of contact over here, at the point of contact, the pellicle as well as the ectoplasm, they degenerate. And a small uh, protoplasmic bridge is formed. Bridge is formed between uh, two individuals. Okay, a bridge that is a, a con con connection through which the uh, there can be genetic exchange or nuclear exchange can happen. Okay, so a bridge, a protoplasmic bridge is formed between the two mating types at the point of contact uh, by way of the degeneration of the pellicle and the ectoplasm at that point. I hope that is clear. 
Now, once this protoplasmic bridge is formed and the two mating types are in con contact through the protoplasmic bridge, now this is referred as a conjugant. I hope that is clear. Okay, so a preconjugant now becomes conjugants. Fine. Now, while at this condition, that is when while it is united uh, or joined together. Uh, the conjugating pair continues to swim actively even though they have stopped feeding they continues to swim actively and a sequence of changes taking take place within the uh, with uh, uh, within the nucleus okay with both the nuclei uh, undergoes a certain amount of changes and that is what happens during the process of conjugation <coughs> now as we have already seen, paramecium chordatum possesses two nuclei, a macronucleus and a micronucleus. Macronucleus, since it is involved in the control of all the vegetative processes going on in the uh, body, it is known as a vegetative nucleus or macronucleus. Okay, while the micronucleus, it is the one which actually take part in the sexual mode of reproduction and hence they are, it is considered, it is considered to be deployed in condition and uh, uh, reproductive nucleus it is being referred to okay now the vegetative you can see here this is the macronucleus and this is uh, you can see this is the micronucleus okay this mating type is having a red color obviously there is no color difference between the uh, uh, nucleus of uh, uh, different mating types but just uh, for understanding we have made it red colored micronucleus of this mating type and the yellow colored in a uh, micronucleus in this one okay so that we can trace uh, what is happening with each of the nucleus fine now back here the, the macronucleus over here this is a macronucleus of this mating type and this one macronucleus over here so what is happening with the macronucleus you can see the macronucleus it undergoes degeneration it breaks down Okay, so that is the next step we have macronucleus, it undergoes um, what you call breakdown uh, into fragments and which are completely later absorbed into the uh, cytoplasm. So, we may not be able to trace the fragments here, you can see it is, it is broken down into fragments and these fragments slowly it gets uh, completely uh, taken, absorbed into the cytoplasm. Now, we cannot trace it, isn't it? Right. So now next one, what is happening to the micronucleus? The micronucleus, it is deployed in condition and uh, it uh, each of the micronucleus of the both the mating types, it grows in size initially and then it divides by meiosis. Okay, it divides by meiosis. Fine. So what happens during meiosis? Meiosis, four micronuclei are uh, formed. And all these micronuclei, since it is undergoing, it, since it underwent um, meiosis, the newly formed micronuclei, they will be haploid in condition. Okay, so four haploid daughter micronuclei are produced. And of these four, what happens is, um, the three micronuclei undergoes meiosis and then the three daughter micronuclei form, they get degenerated. Out of the four, three gets degenerated, three gets broken down and only one will remain. Okay. Now, this uh, uh, um, like uh, the four haploid micronuclei produced uh, out of these three gets degenerated and they disappear in each of the uh, conjugate. Okay. In each of the conjugate, what we have is only a single micronucleus and no macronucleus. Okay. And this micronucleus it is haploid in condition as against the parental uh, what you call uh, paramecium which had a diploid micronucleus the one which is undergoing conjugation will have a haploid micronucleus i hope that is clear okay now uh, the remaining one it will undergo mitosis okay the remaining micronucleus it will divide by mitosis and two uh, my, uh, nuclei will be formed okay and the uh, uh, two new nuclei which are formed they are unequal in size and uh, the larger one it is referred as the uh, what you call the stationary nucleus okay and the smaller one they are known as a migratory nucleus okay so you have two nuclei they are pro they are referred as pro nuclei okay so the uh, larger one is referred as a stationary one and the smaller one is considered to be the migratory pro nuclei uh, the migrate why the name because the stationary pronuclei it will remain in the same mating time while the migratory one it can move across the protoplasmic bridge into the other mating type okay that is why it is known as a migratory pronuclei is it clear okay so so far what has happened macronucleus has undergone uh, 
break down into fragments and it uh, slowly it will get completely absorbed into the cytoplasm. Now, the diploid micronucleus of each of the conjugate, it will undergo meiosis to form four haploid micronuclei. Of these four haploid micronuclei, the three will disappear. Only one will remain, the one uh, haploid micronucleus that will undergo mitosis to produce two unequal sized nuclei. The larger one is considered to be the stationary one which will remain in the same mating type, in the same conjugate during the whole process of conjugation. While the other one, it is migratory, it is smaller, it can pass through the protoplasmic uh, bridge into the, uh, its partner. Okay. So, this is what happens. The migratory nucleus of uh, one conjugate, you can see over here, the migratory nucleus of one conjugant, it will pass through the protoplasmic bridge into the, and the other one. Okay. And uh, simultaneously, the migratory nucleus of this one, it will move to the first one. Okay. And then once it reaches over here, the you can see here, it is uh, one it will be red and the other will be yellow. And here it will be red and yellow. It will fuse together. You can see here, right? So, it will fuse, right? And this will uh, result in a single nucleus, right? So, two haploid nuclei, it has joined together uh, to form a diploid nucleus. And since it is by the fusion of two, uh, what you call, uh, gametic, we can say, pronuclei, it is considered to be the zygote, okay? Diploid zygote nucleus. Is it? I hope it is clear, okay? Now, once the, uh, the complete fusion of the two nuclei uh, from two different individuals forms a zygote nucleus and this process it is known as amphimixis. Okay, amphimixis. What is it? Actually, fusion of two nuclei, haploid nuclei of two different individuals at process known as amphimixis. Okay. Uh, now, the two, uh, you can see here this uh, 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 two pairing paramecia, uh, this it will remain uh, paired it will remain joined together for almost like 48 hours 12 to 48 hours they will remain together and once this diploid zygote nucleus is formed this will get separated once it is getting separated the uh, two individuals are referred as x conjugates okay it is the x conjugation and the two individuals are now referred as x conjugates is it okay so once this uh, uh, so in each of the once this um, x conjugation or separation is completed in each of the X conjugate, we are just tracing only one individual, the same thing is happening in the other also, okay. So, in each of the X conjugate, the zygote nucleus, it undergoes mitosis. You can see here, it undergoes mitosis, okay. Uh, uh, you can see here how many, 4 plus 4, 8 nuclei are formed. So, a single diploid zygote nucleus has undergone mitosis 3 times, okay. Uh, mitosis, it result in only two nuclei isn't it so one has divided into two two has undergone division mitosis to form four and all the four has undergone mitosis again to form eight nuclei okay and uh, of these uh, four nuclei they will enlarge to become macronuclei and the other four it will remain smaller and forms a micronuclei i hope that is that part is clear so the zygote nucleus which is formed during the uh, conjugation process it will undergo uh, mitosis three times one over here two will result in four nuclei and the third mitosis it will result in eight nuclei and of the eight nuclei which are formed four of the nuclei it will um, uh, become larger to form the macronuclei and the other rest of the four it will form the micronuclei okay now of the um, uh, what you call uh, four micronuclei which are formed three will disintegrate you can see here uh, the four are from the four has become enlarged to form the macronuclei the three has uh, 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 formed the micronuclei